we're coming to the end of this year, and I know academically you guys are prepared already for fifth grade. Um, we're, some of us are still working towards that goal. But I think that a way that I can help you guys out to be better prepared for fifth grade is to start you off with some of the rules that you're going to be needing in order to be successful in fifth grade. So these are our new rules that we're going to be implementing. Okay. In order for me to be ready for fifth grade, I think these would make you, you know, just right for, for that grade level. And our first rule is going to be that if you're wearing a ponytail, from now on, you can't go to recess. Another rule, if you wear tennis, your tennis shoes, you can't drink water from the water fountains. I know that some of us like to play soccer and different sports out there when we go to recess. I'm sorry, no more water, okay? If you're bringing a sweater, you're not gonna have lunch, okay? You're not gonna have lunch, okay? Um, if you wear glasses, you can't visit the library. I mean, you already use your eyes enough, okay? Why, you know, stress your eyes even more by sending you to the library? So from now on, no more library if you wear glasses. Okay, that's it for you. You don't need it for fifth grade. And finally, if you have brothers or sisters, you, you will not ride the bus. So these rules, I can assure you, will prepare you for fifth grade. You'll be prepared, okay? So just like I did at the beginning of the year, we're gonna sign off on them, okay? That we agree to follow these rules in order to be prepared for fifth grade. Okay, Samuel, I see you nodding. Okay, um, I'm gonna give you a minute, okay? Because I know I, I was the one that came up with them, but I know what it takes to be a fifth grader. So uh, I'm gonna give you a minute, you're gonna turn, you're going to talk to your shoulder partner, and I want you to discuss what you think of our new rules using this sentence stem. I think our new rules are blank because, and I want you to discuss it with your shoulder partner. When you and your shoulder partner are ready, I want you to give me a thumbs up. Okay? Are we ready? Go ahead. I think the new rules are horrible because if you wear glasses you can't read. Hey guys, since we already um, shared with our shoulder partner what we think of our rules uh, before I have you come up here and sign that you're agreeing to obey those rules or follow these rules to be ready to for fifth grade, I want to get some feedback from you. What you think? I'm going to pick up somebody from here. October. October babies. Michelle. Can you give us your thoughts on our new rules? I think that our new rules still make sense. Okay. Because um, we we can choose what we want to wear and what we do. Okay. And if we need something, we can be, we have the liberty to do it. Okay. Good job. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's see. Let's pick up another reaction. Do we have any August babies? So today we're going to go ahead and read a story called Henry's Freedom Box. Okay, this is a story, a true story from the Underground Railroad, written by uh, Alan Levine. Okay, and um, this is a really, uh, it, this was actually a Candlecott Honor book. Okay, um, and it kind of ties back to um, civil rights. I know some of you had reactions to our rules, and you were kind of like, what? I'm not going to sign that. You know, I don't agree with that. So you're, you're right, you know. We have something called civil rights, okay? I want you to think of this word, civil rights, and I want you to think about what does that mean to you? What are civil rights? I want you to think about it. I want you to turn to your shoulder partner and tell them what civil rights are for you. Give me a thumbs up once your group is ready. I need you with thinker's chin. I'm going to give you a definition. You're going to be looking at your vocabulary right there in your journal. Okay? If you, um, when I give you the definition, if you know the word, I want you to Stand up once I'm finished with the definition. That tells me I know the vocabulary. 
Someone who is legally owned by another person and is forced to work for that person without pay. Okay, any September babies? Okay, thumbs up here. Aloy, can you share with us what would be the word that fits the definition? I think that the word that fits the definition is slave. Okay, if you agree with Aloy, Okay, if you agree with Eloy, give him two thumbs up. Good job, we're ready to move. Henry Brown wasn't sure how old he was. Henry was a slave, and slaves weren't allowed to know their birthdays. Okay, I want you to think about this statement right here. Why do you think slaves were not allowed to know their birthdays? So I want partner A, to share with partner B, okay, what they think. Why do you think slaves were not allowed to know their birthdays? Partner A, go ahead and share with partner B. <laughs> Henry knew they were very lucky. They lived together even though they had different masters. But Nancy was worried. Her master had lost a great deal of money. I'm afraid he will sell our children, she said. Henry sat very still. Clicks, clunks. Henry couldn't move. He couldn't think. He couldn't work. Twist that tobacco, the boss poked Henry. Henry twisted tobacco leaves. His heart twisted in his chest. I want you to think of this last line that the author used. His heart twisted in his chest. What is this an example of? Gabriel? This is an example of figurative language. Okay, so when he says his heart twisted in his chair, chest, what do you think it meant? I think it meant like he was heartbroken that his family was sold. Okay, great job. Okay. Henry watched his children disappear down the road. Okay, I want you to think about what is Henry feeling at this particular moment in the story? What is he thinking? Anthony? Can you please repeat the question? What do you think Henry is thinking or feeling at this particular point in the story? I think what Henry is thinking is that he's going to lose his family forever. Okay. Henry would be delivered to friends in Philadelphia. Philadelphia. Then he printed on the big, uh, on the crate, big letters, this side up. Why do you think it's very important for it to say this side up, Samuel? Because it could be opened up sideways, that upside down. Okay. Imagine being stuck in a box. Okay, he was stuck in a box for a total of 27 hours. The sun was not yet up when Henry climbed into the box. Ready, he said. Jane's nailed down the lid 